allow it to speak to our hearts. So my prayer tonight, God, is that we will uh, just uh, intentionally allow your word to find fertile ground in our hearts tonight, God. And we'll be challenged, and uh, Lord, that we will uh, understand that those times when it seems as if maybe things aren't unfolding the way that we thought they would because we're following you and we kind of get these ideas of maybe what should be happening, uh, Lord, that we'll trust in you and we'll continue to move forward in our relationship with you and uh, that we'll always uh, place our faith in Jesus Christ as he leads the way. And so tonight, we ask all of this in your precious name. Amen. All right, I got all my devices up here on silent. and every, Well, I got one. Uh, I got everything on silent except for this. I am hope I'm coming through loud and clear. Uh, to everybody that might be watching, uh, we hope you guys are out there. Um, and we want you to engage with us and let us know that you're there. Let us know we're coming through loud and clear. Give us some thumbs up or throw us some hearts. Check in and you can shout amen tonight through the service. Um, and we want you, when this is over, to tag some friends and share this video to your timeline and help share the gospel and give somebody some encouragement during this time. Because it's a Wednesday night in the middle of the week and sometimes we need that encouragement to keep going forward. You know, I mean, I know the whole hump day thing and all, but we're going to get through it together. And so uh, before we start, just a couple of quick things. Uh, you can continue to reach us at the email that you see up on your screen right now. Uh, if you have any needs, food, water, clothing, shelter, or you know of someone that we can help, reach out to us. It's confidential. We'll try our best to do whatever we can to help you out. We are able to do that because this church is incredibly generous. You guys support the ministry. We thank you for doing that. There will always be, as long as we're kind of in this COVID protocol situation, we're not going to be passing baskets. There will always be baskets on your way in or out. If you feel led to leave a tithe or an offering in that basket, we'll take care of it for you. But if not, on this next screen you'll see right here, you can give through our Refuge mobile app if you have it downloaded. If you do not have it downloaded, we encourage you to do it. It's a free gift. It's great. You can have it right there on your phone. All right. And just send uh, or just search Refuge Church of NC. It's a free app download. Within that app, you have all the information about our church. Plus, there's a give tab. You can click on it. You can give online that way. You can also give online by texting Silver Refuge to 77977. You'll get a link. Click on it, follow the prompts. Or if all of that is just like, man, I don't want to do all that stuff, you can just slap a stamp on an envelope, send it to P.O. Box 872, and we'll take care of it that way. So that allows us to keep going forward in ministry, and we're very excited about what God's done there. And then uh, some dates coming up here uh, in, the, in the very near future. Uh, we'll be back this Sunday at 8.30, 10 o'clock, and 11.30 to worship. We're going to be right here live on Facebook about 11.45 as we get into God's Word. We'll be back Sunday evening at 6 o'clock for our small group Sunday right here at Refuge. Uh, we're excited about this new ministry, excited that we have volunteers lined up. We're excited we have a leadership team lined up. We're excited to have a couple of people come last week and get it off to a great start. And uh, I believe it's going to be a, an incredible ministry here at this church. And uh, we encourage you to come for a time of worship and getting into God's Word together. And uh, it's just going to be some good stuff. So you guys come on out to that. If you get an opportunity on Sunday nights, if you want to build some relationships, as we continue to move forward uh, next Wednesday we're really excited most of y'all know this and if you're watching we want you definitely to know it uh, our new pastor in Roper will be uh, sharing his first sermon and his testimony next Wednesday night at 630 you all want to be here to hear it I've read it and I cried so there, there you go. And I, I don't know I kind of cry a little bit at some things you know I'm a little soft but um, what an amazing story of redemption and that's what he's going to be talking about next week and so I encourage you to be here if at all possible to be here at 630 our youth group will continue to meet at 630 in their facility on the very next night Miss Connie's going to be having a women's Bible study at six o'clock there's a sign-up sheet in the lobby you guys can hit that up so she'll know how many to prepare for when it comes to the meal you guys can come out to that and then on October 10th we're having a one-night marriage conference it's for people that are married single dating engaged looking for somebody tired of everybody it doesn't matter we're going to come you can help build great uh, a great relationship or a great foundation for all your relationships when it comes uh, to your future and, and everything that's going on there we're going to have dinner and child care uh, at that event on the 10th also i wanted to mention i knew there was something i was leaving out uh, at six o'clock on sunday nights we do have child care as well so if you have small children and you need to bring them someone will watch them and uh, you can hand them off for a couple of hours and, and get involved with our small group. So we got all that going on. Now let me start preaching, okay? Last Wednesday, what a powerful, powerful night it was as we talked about this idea 
of following the light of Jesus. That's what we want to do in our lives. He, he clearly says, if you follow me, you won't have to live in the dark. I am the light of the world. And so we looked at that last week, and this idea of following the light, following Jesus in this dark world keeps us moving in the right direction. It helps us to take our next step. We're going to hit on that a little bit short term. It is a lamp for our feet. Long term, it is a light for our path. He'll never lead us wrong. It provides a great road map for us. It corrects us when we start going the wrong way. And it leads us to our ultimate destination. Now, if we know that our ultimate destination is Jesus Christ, and we want to continue to follow that light in this world so that we can have all the riches in eternity and an abundant life now, if we're going to follow the light that leads us to our final destination, our last point from last week, and that's what we made, we've got to make our minds up to live a life where we, we make our minds up that we're, we're going to live this way. And that's this right here, and I've titled it tonight, No Turning Back. We don't want to walk back into the darkness. We have a tendency to do that from time to time, to make choices that get us off the right path. We're going to be looking at Mark chapter 12 tonight for, at the very beginning. Our primary scripture is going to come out of the book of Philippians. Some of my favorite uh, passages of scripture tonight, some very basic uh, teaching from Jesus, but very challenging too, because we've heard these verses. If you've been here, you've heard these verses a lot that we're going to look at tonight. Sometimes I think we dismiss the challenge that comes with these verses and what God's calling us to do. And we're going to take Jesus' greatest command from Scripture. You better turn that phone off. We're going to take uh, we're going to take Jesus' greatest command from Scripture, and we're going to break it down in a way tonight uh, about just what we need to do in order to follow Him and to live a life of obedience. I understand that we make mistakes. And that we all fall down from time to time. But as children of God, I think we need to kind of like, I, I'm pressing our church and I I'm, and I'm really am kind of challenging our church to move into a much more mature relationship with Jesus in our daily walk. I, I'm, I'm doing this and, and I'm doing it for everybody. From the pastor down to the, to the first time guest, I want us to press in and to learn to live lives of obedience instead of having to live this constant life of repentance and turning back around I, I listen we've all been down that road and I'm we're not here to condemn you if that's where you're at and you're making mistakes but I thought about this and 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 I know if you've got children or if you ever have had children or man you could even apply this to a dog and don't think I'm talking about like we're dogs all right but like I'm just saying like you can apply this to almost any relationship there comes a time when I am as a father instructing my daughters on things that need to be done and you all that are parents y'all get this okay you get it I'm instructing them on things on my expectations and what I want to be done and they know that the expectation is there and so sometimes they don't live up to that expectation and sometimes it's it has to do with things that I've told them several times we've got a rule in our house and y'all probably have rules similar to this and some of y'all have been in our house you kind of know this and people have talked about like the way our house is and it's just like it's not crazy clean or crazy organized but we do like to take care of what God has blessed us with so we do try to take care of our house and, and part of that is we've taught our daughters like, listen this is your home like live in it play in it have fun in it we're gonna give you opportunities to bring toys downstairs and you can play upstairs and you can do some things and we're gonna enjoy this house but here's the rule. Y'all parents, some of y'all are going to be like, yep. When you get done with something, what? Put it back. Before, and it's, this, it's not just when you get done, put it back. It's when you get done, put it back before you start doing something else. Because if you don't, then that, garb, that stuff's just going to lay around. I'm going to step on a Lego. Y'all heard me go off last week about stepping on Legos. Nobody wants to do that. Or I'm, I'm picking up pieces of paper. Our girls are all into arts and crafts and all that stuff. And so, so this is something that because of their age and because they're learning, I have to drive home with them several times. But I'm getting, and here's my point, and y'all are like, what is he talking about? Why is he doing this? I got a point, I promise. Because I'll tell them, if I notice that they've moved on to something else and there's still stuff laying around, I'm like, hey, y'all forgetting something? 
and they'll go, oh, yeah, Daddy, we need to clean up. We're sorry. And, I, and, and I've gotten to this point where I'm like, hey, sorry's all right, but it's time to, like, I don't want you to be sorry. I want you to obey. I, I don't want to hear sorry anymore. You've, you've kind of heard this enough. Daddy loves you and all, but I mean, I'm, do I need to, you know, I think the, the right phrase that I've used is, you know, do I need to jerk a, ta- a, a, a knot in your tail? Because I don't want to do that. I, but I, 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 and I don't want God to have to jerk a knot in our tail, so I want us to get on the right path and, and be obedient. And so that's what I've kind of t- started telling them is like, listen, I know we all make mistakes, girls, but it's kind of time for the sorries to stop. And to, stop, and to start being obedient. And that's what I want us to do as Christians. So I'm kind of pressing in on that a little bit in this message tonight. And I didn't plan on talking about my daughters tonight, but it's okay. Um, I love them, and I'll talk about them anytime. And I'll use them, in, uh, and, and like my wife's already told me to stop using her in sermon illustrations, but my daughters can't, so there you go. Um, so this week, we're going to look at this scripture. This is Jesus, his greatest commandment he was asked what's the greatest command this is what he said the most important is the lord our god the lord is one he's he's saying you know hear this and you shall love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength and then in typical jesus style he adds a little something to the mix and he goes the second is you shall love your neighbor as yourself there's no other commandment greater than these so before we start, real quick, and I know we opened up with prayer, let me pray that God will speak to our hearts tonight as we look at this really challenging commandment that he's given us. Very quickly, let's pray. God, soften our hearts and, and speak to our hearts tonight, Lord, and let us respond. And God, if it gets uncomfortable and it gets challenging, so be it so that we can move forward. Have your will and way in Jesus' name. Amen. So before we get into the rest of our scripture and a few points tonight, here's the very first point I'm going to make. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes, sometimes in sermons, when I do points or when I, when I give you some things to write down, it's kind of like it's building up to something at the end that it's like, you know, all of this, and then here's the, here's the, best, the, the, the biggest and the best last point. Well, tonight is kind of like this. Tonight is this. Like, this first idea is a big idea. And if you don't get it, nothing else I tell you tonight will matter. Like, it won't matter. If you can't do number one, don't worry about two, three, four, and maybe five, I think. I don't know. Like, don't, like, you've got to do number one. You've got you to break this down, and you've got to accept this as fact tonight, and you've got to act accordingly when it comes to following Jesus. Everybody clear? You've got to understand that following Jesus will happen intentionally, not automatically. Nobody in here drifts towards holiness. Nobody in here, nobody, nobody, me, you, nobody, Nobody just becomes holier, more righteous, uh, a, a, a more obedient. Nobody drifts into that, and we have to do it intentionally. Another way is this, it ain't going to happen accidentally. Like, you ain't going to come back in three weeks and go, you know what? I've totally ignored God, but somehow, I'm more holy. I've gotten better. My sins are all gone. I'm not, it's all good. You see the halo? It's all good. We don't do that. We turn away we're all rebellious. Last week, I think we looked at that passage of Scripture. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We all do it if we're not intentionally following Jesus closer. So that's the first thing tonight. Listen, it's like we have to grow stronger in Christ, and we have to make it intentional. And, we, and this idea that Jesus said, the, pa- the, the passage we've looked at, sounds simple. It sounds good. It sounds like something you'd be like, I love you with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind and all my strength. Sounds like something you say to, like, you know, a woman or something you date. That's a pretty good pickup line, right? It, it's simple, but, man, put them in action. Like, break that down. Love the Lord with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and all of your strength. That does not happen on accident. We have to be intentional about doing that. This challenges all of us it challenges all of us doesn't matter who we are or where we're at in our spiritual lives every day that's a challenge to say i'm going to set all this aside and i'm going to love god with all my heart soul mind and strength and so and and i said it's for all of us i mean like as i change gears here a little bit i mean like we can look around this room and i can look around at all of my brothers and sisters in this room today and i can tell you something that i know right away about all of us we're all really different people 
We're all different. We may be at different place, places in our walk with Jesus. But we're, we, got, we got all kind of different folks around here. We got folks that are local. We got folks that have moved here. We got folks that are snowbirds. We got folks that, uh, you know, kind of have made this their second hometown. That's kind of me. I mean, I, I feel like now I've been here right at 14 years in the beautiful town of Silver, North Carolina. This is my hometown now. I go back and visit where I grew up, but this now is my hometown. Some of y'all been here your whole life. Some of y'all, you know, circumstances brought you here, and now it's your home. We're all different. We all have different likes and dislikes. Some of y'all like country music. Some of y'all like rock and roll. Some of y'all might like rap. Some of y'all might like techno or polka. I don't know. Any, any Christian music lovers? Some of y'all like, oh, yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah, see there? What? Some of y'all like the beach. Some of y'all like the mountains. Some of y'all like to go camping. I've never figured that one out, but some of y'all like to go camping. Like I said, I don't, America is the only place where people go on vacation and act poorer than they really are. That's bizarre to me. Speaking about vacation, I'm totally in vacation mode. We're going to the beach next week. I'm going to share that a little bit on Sunday. But people go, people go camping and pretend like they're homeless. I don't get that. All right, so we've got so many different types of people, and, and, and we've got so many different things that we like. And, and all this, we're all united by Jesus, and we all come together because he brings us together. But we're not going to all be the same. We're not going to all, and we don't want everybody to be the same as far as our likes and our dislikes and our personalities. It's what makes us unique. The diversity of this church is, is just fantastic for this little small town. And I love it because we got all kinds of different people. But there's something that we all have in common in all of those differences. We all have something in common today when it comes to our spiritual walk. And we're going to look at scripture in a minute and I'm going to show you this. Number two is this. We all have room to grow. We all do. We all have room to grow. Me, you, all of us. So we're, so we're all going somewhere. Because we've, we've looked the past several weeks, and when I say we're all going somewhere, we've looked the past several weeks that this whole idea of Christianity, you hear terms and phrases that are biblical, and it's true. And, and, and like this, we're, on journey, we're all on a journey. We're all on journeys with Jesus. We're all walking the path with him, or we're walking our own path. That's what life is. It's always moving. Life is moving. You're going to be one day older tomorrow than you are today. Next year, you're going to be a year older. We're always moving. Life doesn't just stand still. We don't just stand still in our lives. We're either, we're either moving forward or we're moving backward, but we're moving somewhere. We're all going somewhere, and we all have room to grow. So why not grow in Christ and do it together? That's what the Bible calls us to do, and that's, that's really what we want to do. Our spiritual growth and our relationship with Jesus and where we're at may look different than the person sitting right next to us. Even if it's your spouse, it, it, it probably is. But we've all got that room to grow. And so we want to challenge you today to love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and don't turn back. Live that way each day. Set aside the things that this world says are important. We talked on Sunday. Go against the grain. The, the ideals and the ideas of this world Go against that and instead live a gospel-centered life where Jesus is leading you, guiding you, and directing you, and you can trust him to take you the right way. Follow that light like we said last Wednesday. And this is what Paul shares with the Philippian church in these next verses. In, in Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse 7, this is what he talks about, about growing and about moving and about what we do and about the things of this world. I talk about the things of this world. Look at what he, like, okay, listen. You got to understand, Paul had all the credentials. Paul had a, a, a lot that this world could offer. And he says, but whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. In other words, it doesn't matter now that I've got this. This is what's most important, Jesus. He said, indeed, I count everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish. It doesn't matter. All of those things now don't matter because I've got the most important thing in order that I might gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but, by, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. 
Not that I have already obtained this or I'm already perfect. Just like we said, we all have room to grow. But I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. I keep moving forward. Brothers and sisters, some translations say that. I do not consider that I've made it my own, but one thing I do is forgetting what lies behind and strain forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I keep following that light. I don't turn back. I keep going forward. And then he goes on in verse 15. I included it for this reason. Let those of us who are mature think this way. Like it's, this is about spiritual maturity. Like we got somewhere to go. And if, if any of you think, if, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. So, hey, if, you, if you're not there yet, we pray that God will reveal that to you in time. Where you need to go, where he's taking you, where you don't press on. We have to be intentional, and we've got to keep moving. And I see a lot of folks that allow circum. and we talk about these things about the rubbish of this world. And the things in this world that we, that we want to set aside and fix our eyes on Jesus, I see too many people get distracted by the things of this world and they allow it to pull them away from Jesus and to turn their back on him and sometimes these things listen and I'm not going to minimize some of these things that happen we've got folks in our church that have had these things happen the worst things that can happen on the face of this earth death or you know somebody gets diagnosed with something chronic or um you know broken relationships and things that, you know we lose people and these things happen and, I, and 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 we go through a season on earth that feels literally like hell i mean i look around this room and i know some of the stuff you guys have gone through i know some of the things you're still going through you're still getting through them health challenges financial challenges family challenges career challenges all these things you look around and you go man I'm in a season where it feels like it's kind of like hell on earth. And I don't know if I can keep going. And I, I shared a great quote with you before. And I'm going to share it again. I think I, it really, it's just, it's just a, a, great, a great quote to kind of uh, apply to your spiritual life. And it's actually from a man named, that everybody's heard of named Winston Churchill. And he said this. He said, if you find yourself going through hell, by all means, don't stop. Keep going. Because you'll eventually get through to the other side. And too many people, like that, when they're going through that, they just shut down. And God is calling us to keep moving in the light of Jesus Christ. Even though those, even those times, that Paul talks about like the, the power of the resurrection, share in his sufferings. We know that when we share in those sufferings and when we go through those times, we have a hope that will get us through those times. And that hope is in Jesus, not in the things of this world. All the things of this world will perish. They'll all at some time perish. And so we have to be intentional and we have to realize that we've got to keep moving because we're all somewhere along this journey in life. And if we're ever to grow stronger, if we are ever to grow stronger, this next point has to be understood when we're, when we're moving, like especially during those tough times. We need to follow the voice of Jesus, not the lies of the enemy. You know, you know what Jesus says about his sheep? They hear my voice and they know my voice. So we need to know Jesus and we need to, we need to understand when he's calling us in the direction that he's calling in. And we can't listen to the lies of the enemy. Don't buy into Satan's lies. I, there's a couple, there's a couple of lies that I'll address today. And, and, and like, look, because he's, the, that's what the Bible says. Like, I don't even think about this. Like, he's the, he's the father of lies. That's what he does. It's in his nature. It's his character. All he does is lie. I mean, everything that the enemy does is to try to pull you away from the truth of Jesus Christ and the truth of God's Word. So that's all he's going to do is continue to feed you lies. You can't make it. You can't handle this. You're not good enough. Blah, all these other things. But, he's, but there's some other things that he, that he does to keep us from moving forward. There are some things that he, that he will tell you, the, some lies from the enemy that he will tell you to keep you from moving forward. And you've got to understand this. And so we're going to challenge you today because I want God's best for you. And one of the things that he might tell you is this. Hey, don't worry about continuing to move forward. You're good right where you're at. You're good right where you're at. Keep spinning your wheels. Keep kind of coming in and getting a little bit of hope but feeling mostly hopeless. 
Just do your thing. Make it a checklist. Go to church and be happy. Don't really exercise your faith. He's the great deceiver. He wants you to believe, hey, you're good, right? I mean, hey, you got the fire insurance. Why do you want to do anything else, right? Like you can live, it, you live, live this life the way you want. And you've already said you believe in Jesus, so you won't burn in hell, so you get to go to heaven and be with all the angels and all your relatives who everybody magically goes to heaven. I'm just kidding. That's bad. <laughs> the last thing that Satan wants for you is to actually live out your faith and grow stronger in Christ. So he's always going to just say, stay where you're at. Keep doing what you're doing. You'll hear him whispering, hey, you're all good. You're good. Don't try to, you know, don't, don't trust in God to fix this or don't put this down. And, 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 and because another lie that we believe sometimes that he'll tell us is this, is like, well, if it was of God, it wouldn't be tough. Your next move wouldn't be tough. God, God wouldn't make things difficult for you. God would not ask you to do something tough. And there's one huge glaring problem with that lie. His own son, Jesus. And God's not going to ask us to die for the sins of the world, but he asked Jesus to do that. He, I mean, so if we're following Jesus, we've got to understand that things will get tough, and there are some tough decisions and tough steps of faith that we must take. The biggest reason we don't take a lot of steps of our faith is it's not because we don't believe in the strength of God. We don't believe in the strength of God in us. We don't believe he can actually do it through us. We don't believe we can actually put down the bottle. We don't believe we can actually stop the pills. We don't believe we can actually stop clicking on those links. We don't believe that we can actually stop harboring this unforgiveness or this resentment in our hearts. We don't actually believe that our, that, 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 that us and our spouse can really get along. We're just kind of, we're going to just do this for the sake of the kids. But there's really no hope for our marriage. But we'll stay together for the kids. We'll be so self-righteous. And we'll be miserable people, but nobody will ever know it. You don't understand the power that lives in you. Once you receive Jesus and the Holy Spirit is in you, it is the power that raised him from the dead. He can raise any situations in your life from the dead. But you've got to trust in him and believe it, and you've got to take that step of faith. If you're not going to be obedient, and all you're going to do is, like what I talked about with my daughters just over and over, and say, just sorry, 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 sorry. Well, I mean, you're never going to experience what God has for you. So we, we have to understand that. We don't want you to buy those lies and, and, and listen and understand that things are always going to be really easy because it's, it's not. And so we don't want you to believe the lies of the enemy. Number four is this, is that we want you to believe in God's truth, which is his word. And the word of Jesus. When it comes to this idea that you're good like you are, right, this argument, let me clear it up, all right? I, and I, I've said this a lot. I want to say, and I keep saying it. I won't say it until the cows come home. I, I don't know when that... I don't even know what that makes sense. Um, I'm, I'll keep saying it, though. We don't have any cows. So, that, I, in other words, I'll be saying this forever. All right, so. He said he's going to say it till the cows come home. I didn't know they had any at refuge. So, we don't. So, in other words, I'll keep saying this. Um, we love you like you are. God loves you like you are. I love my daughters just like they are. In fact, my love for them every single day gets stronger because I make sure they know that. Make them answer every day. How much does daddy love you? More every day. That's right. And I go, how is that possible? Because our love grows. That's right. I still want you to be obedient. God, so we love you like you are. God loves you like you are. And we've had, we've had this phrase in here, and yeah, it's okay not to be okay in being here. We wouldn't want you anywhere else we want you here, all right, but we want you to grow and be all that God wants you to be. Wait, like, we don't want to just sit and watch and go, wait, it's so sad. They got so much potential. They just don't ever do anything, though. Like, I, I don't want that for my own children. God doesn't want it, want it for his children. 
He wants us to grow and be able to, like, if we do look back, it's looking back going, man, look what God delivered me from. It's not like, man, yeah, I started this five years ago and I'm still doing it all over. I'm still, I'm still doing this. I'm still doing this. So we want you to grow and be all that God wants you to be. And Scripture will show us that we all have greater things ahead when we follow Jesus. That you either believe that or you don't. I might break this mic tonight. It's a good thing Sam don't have the earphones on. She'd probably be deaf. Somebody's watching on Facebook going, where's my volume button? I've got to turn him down. All right. Like, we, I mean, we either believe that following Jesus leads to a more abundant life or we just dismiss that and go, thanks for taking my place on the cross, but I'll do things my own way. It's so much better when we follow him. God's word is full of that. It's full of the truth of an abundant life. And yes, we're not going to take away our circumstances and our situations. We're not going to take those things away. They're going to they're be there. We all deal with it. The world's broken. We all have struggles. We all have heartaches. We all have brokenness. Jesus gets us through. He is the hope. And then for that idea that, that like, God would never ask you to do something tough or God would never bring about difficult circumstances, that's just a straight-out lie. Like, that's a lie. Jesus himself says, in this world, you will have trouble. So when the enemy goes, if God loved you, you wouldn't have any trouble. You know what we do? We put ourselves up on a pedestal and go, yeah, that's right. That's right. I shouldn't be having any trouble. I should be, like, this, ain't, this, ain't, this ain't right. And I see so many people, and, and, and I get it, man. Like, you deal with heartbreaking situations. Don't turn your back on God. I mean, it, it, and some of these things about doing things that are hard, it could be something you've held on to for a long time. Something that maybe has affected you a long time. Maybe some really tough stuff that you've been going through and you've allowed it to stop you. And you've not been able to push through it. And I just want to encourage you. Let tonight be the night. Why would you put it off? Why would you put it off if you know that God has called you to keep moving in your stop? We want to encourage you. Last point tonight is this. Number five is to take your next step. Just take it. Because we all, we've already made this, we've already discovered this tonight, and we've already kind of come into agreement with this tonight, that we all have a next step to take. And Paul, in, in that passage we read, he's like, he's speaking of knowing and growing in Christ. And he lists some worldly accomplishments and, and credentials early on in Philippians 3 and some successes that he had. And then he goes, none of that really matters. And, and in, in modern day terms, it's not just about, and I kind of mentioned this, maybe it was last week, like, Jesus is our teacher. We are the students. So the, the way that you kind of look at your relationship with him will be this, how good of a student am I? Am I, am, I, am I trying to be all that I can be for Christ? Or am I just going through the motions? It's not just about coming to church and then doing nothing. We grow through faith. That's how we grow. We don't grow by just sitting around and checking off all the days that we've been to church. We grow by living a life of faith. And he says, look, I focus on one thing. I don't look back. I press forward. I'm moving forward in Christ. So if you feel stuck today, here's my encouragement. Get unstuck. Make the first move. Take a step toward him. He'll come running to you. We'll pray for you. We'll encourage you. I've said it before. I've seen people that for 10, 20, 30 years or longer go to church, and they don't ever change. It's because they believe the lie. Hey, I'm good. I'm here. I'm good. They don't want to press forward. They want to just set the cruise. And the truth today is, listen, your next step may be a tough one, and maybe you need to take it tonight. And that's not we're going to encourage you. Just run to the Father. Take that step, whatever it is. It could be setting something down. It could be a, a habit that you've got. It could be uh, just these, uh, I don't know, this pattern that you've been in with relationships, this pattern of living your life and the decisions that you're making. And you know you're the one who's making these decisions. And then over and over again, it leaves you broken when God is just saying, hey, just trust me and be obedient. I've got something better. I've got something better. 
Maybe it's to be involved in ministry. Maybe it's to start serving. Maybe it's to, I don't know, reach out to a lost friend. I don't know what that next step is. I mean, God puts stuff on our hearts all the time. If we really seek him, he puts stuff on our hearts. And all he's asking us to do is take that step toward him, trust him, and understand that he'll more than meet us halfway. Amen? Let's pray together tonight. Father, I thank you for this opportunity once again to be in this place, to share your word, to challenge those. And Lord, I pray tonight, God, that if there's anyone in here that needs to run to you, God, that they would do that. They wouldn't waste another second, God, but they would trust in you and what you want to do, that you could heal their heart, God, that you could just welcome them with grace, God, that you could uh, just be that friend that they desperately need, Lord, to just uh, to, to hear their voice as they cry out tonight, God. Whatever it is, Lord, we know that you can meet that need. So I pray that we'll press forward tonight and we'll trust you and we'll not let anything get in the way, God, if we need to do that. If, if we just need to simply close out it uh, and, and singing this song and worship, God, I pray that we'll do that as well. I just, as always, God, I just ask that we as your children might be obedient and respond accordingly during this time. We thank you and we praise you. We ask it in Jesus' name.